name tonight. You are a God of love, a God of mercy, a God of kindness, and a God of wonders, power, and miracles. We're asking tonight, Lord, you open the windows of heaven. And you confirm the prayers of your people in Jesus' name. You cancel every writing against anyone here tonight in Jesus' name. You wipe out all the darkness and all the evil things the evil people have planted in any life here tonight in Jesus' name. Make this, Lord power night for your people a great night for your people and a time of breakthrough for everyone tonight in Jesus name answer the prayers of your people do much more than they are asking you tonight confirm your power in every life in Jesus mighty name we pray God bless you. You can see now we're coming to Isaiah chapter 35. Isaiah chapter 35, and I'm reading from verse 1. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them. The desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly. Rejo and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it. The excellency of Camel and Sharon, they shall see the glory of the Lord. We shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Verse 3, strengthen the weak hands, confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that of a fearful heart, be strong. The Lord said, I should tell you, be strong. Fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. Salvation. Free salvation. Full salvation. In your soul. In your spirit in your body, in your business, in your family, in everything around you, total salvation from the Lord in Jesus' name. Verse 5, then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. Are you there? Dimness of sight will vanish away. Glaucoma will vanish away. Cataract will be totally erased out of your life. You will not be blind. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man live as an heart, and the tongue of the, of the dumb shall sing. And let, let me stop for a moment in verse 6. You see, if we want the blind eyes to be opened, then we bring blind people. And if we bring, we want those who are lame to rise up and walk and see spectacular miracles in our midst, then we must bring them. But if you are there and nobody is blind, and if you are there and nobody is lame, and only the people out there who are hearing through the internet or streaming, they're the only people that bring all those people. The miracles will be happening everywhere. And then you will say, we don't see any miracles. Thank God I see miracles. I say, thank God I see miracles. Next time you are coming, come with them. And God will pleasantly, miraculously, supernaturally surprise you. It says in verse 6, Then shall the lame man leap as an heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall, be water, shall waters break out, and streams in the desert, and the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty spring land springs of water. In the habitation of dragons, where each lay, shall be grass with reeds and rushes and an highway shall be there and a wave 
and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those the wayfaring men, though fools, shall not err therein. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return. And come, with, and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness. And, and in your life and in your family and in your local church and in our church and uh, sorrow and sign shall flee away this is your night nothing will hinder you tonight nothing will block your way tonight the Lord is giving us a highway, an express way, an express way into the miracle power of the Lord. An express way. There's no hold up. There's no go slow. And there is nothing to hinder you tonight. You will get there. Second Kings. I'm reading from chapter 2. In Second Kings chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 9. And it came to pass, when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee, before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion, somebody to help me shout double portion, double promotion, Double prosperity, double power. You see, I'm the, I'm the only one that is shouting in the house. I said, double power and double provision for everyone. Every family is going to receive, every believer is going to receive. The Lord, I said, will surprise you tonight. Miraculously, it will surprise you. Supernaturally, he will surprise you. Happily, he will surprise you. Cheerfully, he will surprise you. What you have never got, you will get. He said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. We're coming to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. And I'm reading from verse 12, John chapter 14. We're looking at verse 12. It tells us very clearly here, in the very words of Jesus Christ, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me. Any believer here tonight? I said any believer there tonight? You will get it. You will possess it. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do also. Why not you? Why not you tonight? I said, the words of Jesus said, Whosoever, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do also. And greater works, and greater works, and greater works, it must happen in your life. We cannot read a verse of scripture and then overlook it and say, that's for them. This one is for you tonight. In your lifetime, this must happen through you. It says, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do also. And greater works, will it happen? Greater works, I said, will it happen? I told you that you have brought the blind, but even if you didn't bring them and you remember them at home, while we're praying, you mention their names and then we pray at home right there, we'll send the word, their blind eyes will open. 
I said you didn't bring the lame, the paralyzed. But don't worry. Even those in the hospital mention their name and say, I'm raising up my hand. I am making this request on behalf of so and so. And you mentioned their name as we are praying here. A miracle will strike them there. Greater works than these shall ye do, because I go unto my Father. Verse 13, and whatsoever, and whatsoever, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. That, thing, that promise cannot fail. That statement cannot fall to the ground. It must be fulfilled in your life. It must be fulfilled in your family. It says, whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name tonight, if ye shall ask anything in my name, where you are there, tonight in this service tonight in this auditorium and anywhere you are carrying the word of god if you shall ask anything in my name tell me there i will do it will he fail are you going to be disappointed no disappointment in your life again if you shall ask anything in my name i will do it look at those three passages i read to you now from isaiah chapter 35 from 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 9 and from John chapter 14 verses 12 to 14. Tonight I'm talking to you on God's highway to the believer's double portion. God's highway to the believer's double portion. Double portion upon my life tonight. I said double portion upon my life tonight. Double joy double happiness, double miracle, double healing, double deliverance, double dominion, double power, double promotion, double provision, and double inheritance is coming your way. I said it's coming your way. You will give a testimony. My sister, I said you will give a testimony. Brother, you have a testimony tonight double 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 for you god's highway to the believers double portion three things we're looking at number one the commission with dynamic promises he gives a commission and then that commission has promises that are not static promises that are not dead promises that are not dormant but dynamic the commission that he gives and then he backs up those commission that commission with dynamic promises and it's in your life tonight something will be activated in your life excitement in your life tonight joy in your life tonight dynamite in your life tonight moving forward in your life tonight all those things that are sluggish all those things that are sleeping, all those things that are cold, all those things that are lukewarm, tonight, fire from heaven. And everything that is cold and lukewarm, fervency will come in Jesus' name. The commission with dynamic promises. Number two, the consecration for a double portion. You see, there are people, they read the word of God, and the double portion is close to them. The double portion is so nearby. The double portion is just like they should stretch their hand and they will grab it. But they do not understand something standing between them and the double portion. That wall of partition between you and the double portion tonight will crumble. The Lord is going to do everything necessary, everything possible. If you will cooperate with God tonight, double portion has come for you. Your life will not be as cold, as insipid, as uh, kind of uh, lukewarm as it has been before. There is an excitement in heaven already that tonight there is great joy concerning you and concerning your family because the night of double portion has now arrived 
and it is for you. It is for me. Whatever you have got, double tonight. Whatever you have experienced, double tonight. But then there is a commitment. There is an absolute surrender. There is a yieldedness unto the Lord. There is a consecration for a double portion. Point number three, the connection. Tonight, you are connected. The connection with divine power. The connection with divine power. I come to number one. What's your number one over there? The commission with dynamic promises. We're coming to First Kings chapter 19. First Kings chapter 19. And I'm reading from verse 15. First Kings chapter 19. And I'm reading here from verse 15. Here is the Almighty God Himself talking to Elijah. Elijah was a discouraged man, a discouraged minister. It's like he wanted to fold up everything. In fact, he was telling the Lord, it's time to die. And the Lord did not have any plan of death for Elijah. And he said, I will die, I will die. All those negative things you have said about yourself, and that's not the plan of God, those things will not happen. It was just discouragement. It was despair. It was like, you know, what am I doing on earth again? You still have something to do on earth. And you are going to do it and nobody will take your place in Jesus' name. In First Kings chapter 19, I'm reading from verse 15. And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Azael to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshai, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. And tell me the next name there. Tell me out loud if you are there. If it's your Bible, like in my Bible, tell me again. And Elisha, the son of Shephat, of Abel Mehola, shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. Hold on. Elisha did not even know that there was a great position waiting for him. Elisha did not know that there was something in a great and something mighty, a kind of national ministry that God had for Elisha. And it was just a plowman, it was just a farmer, and so making use of his oxen and then plowing the field. And all of a sudden, where Elisha was, he gave the name of Elisha unto Elijah. God knows your name. God knows the devil you are at at this moment. And he knows you are not going to stay at that level. You are not going to remain at that level. There's going to be an upliftment tonight. There's going to be a promotion tonight. There's going to be a forward march tonight. There's going to be a kind of energy, a kind of power, a kind of spiritual outpouring you never got in your life before is coming to you tonight in Jesus' name. And so here was the commission for Elijah that you will choose Elisha and then he will take your place. He will stay in your room. He will perform all the miracles you have performed. He will even do more as you have served this generation Elijah. Elisha is going to serve his own generation successfully. And thank God, this is your own time. You will serve your own generation. And you will serve successfully in Jesus' name. We're coming to Jeremiah chapter 1. And I'm reading from verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. It says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Now you must understand, the knowledge of God is not limited. Before you were born, he knew you. That you were born in this country, he knew you. And then when you didn't even know him, and you were still going about here and there, he was looking for you. And now he's brought you into the kingdom. Business will now start. Work will now start. God's appointment in your life will now start. Where is the person I'm talking about? You must succeed. God's will must be fulfilled in your life. 
Look at this. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. I ordained thee, I appointed thee, and I registered you a prophet unto the nations. And it looks like Jeremiah did not know anything about it. And then said I, ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. Put all your excuses in that verse 6. I cannot, but you can. I'm weak, but you are strong. I'm sick, but you are well. I'm not knowledgeable, but you have the knowledge of God. I feel small. But you have a big God living inside you. And nobody listens to me. And everybody is going to listen to you. And I've never done that before. And you are going to do it. Put all the negative confession you have been making. And you have been saying about yourself. Put it in that verse 6. And bury it there. Now move forward. Look at verse 7. But the Lord said unto me. Say not. I am a child. Don't say that again. The things we've been saying before, I cannot, I can't do it, I don't have, I don't amount to anything, I've tried before, I've always failed. No, that's in the past. There's a new day. I said, there's a new day. It says, for thou shalt go to all that I send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces. Be not afraid of their faces. Some of them will look like Nebuchadnezzar. Be not afraid of their faces. Some of them will stand and talk and look like a pharaoh. But do not be afraid of their faces. Some of them will look like Sinakero. And then they will threaten and they will say, I will do this, I will do that. It's a lie. Nobody can touch your life again. Look at the word of God, don't look at their faces. Look at the promises of God, don't look at their faces. And look at the calling of God upon your life, and don't look at their faces. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee. To deliver thee, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand, and he touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my word in your mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down. They will not pull you down. You are the one to pull down the kingdoms of darkness. Whatever you see in the dream, whatever you hear during the day cannot pull you down will not pull you down you have christ living on the inside of you and greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world your own time has now come you will root out you will pull down and to destroy you'll destroy every work of the devil that stands in your way in jesus name and to throw down and then to build and to plant and then moreover the word of the lord in verse 11 came unto me saying jeremiah what seest thou what seest thou and i said i see a rod of an almond tree then said the lord unto me thou hast well seen do you see anything tonight do you see any promise tonight do you sense any power tonight and do you know the prophecy that is coming your way tonight? That was seen well. For I will hasten my word to perform it. I will hasten my word to perform it. He will do it for you. He will do it inside you. And he will do it through you. Mark chapter 16 I'm reading from verse 15. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. The commission with dynamic promises. The commission he has given to you. Just like he gave commission to Elijah, and then to Elisha, and then to Jeremiah, and to Ezekiel, and to the rest of them. And all those commissions, he backed up 
with dynamic promises. Look at Mark chapter 16 verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. And these signs shall follow them that believe. I'm a believer. I am a believer. I believe in God. I'm a believer. I believe in Christ. I'm a believer. I believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm a believer. I believe the whole Bible from cover to cover. I'm a believer. I believe the promises of God. I am a believer. I believe the words that came out of the mouth of Jesus Christ. And I believe the words are for me. The prophecies are for me. The promises are for me. I'm saying it for myself. The grace is for me. The mercy is for me. The anointing is for me. And everything he has said over here, because he says, these signs shall follow them that believe, they are mine. I said they are mine. They will become true in your life. Look at verse 17. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. And they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Poison will not kill you. Magic will not kill you. Talisman will not kill you. Powers of darkness will not kill you. You will spend all your days to the very last minute, the very last moment. It is when you finish and you are ready to go, you will go. Cancer will not come and arrest you. I say, come, 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 come. Let us go. Uh-uh, cancer, you are, not, you are not a messenger of God for me. You will not take me where I'm going. I said, they will not take you from here. Sickness will not come and arrest you and say, come, come, come. Let us go. Uh -uh, you are not. An angel will come and take me on. Didn't you hear that I said, an angel will come and take you? It says, they shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. Verse 19, so then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and he sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth, were going forth. Brothers, sisters, I said we're going forth. We'll be sitting down for too long a time. We're going forth. We'll be too slow in the past. From now on, we're going forth. And as you go forth, the promises of the commission will be fulfilled in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. And they went forth and preached everywhere. They preached. Where did they preach? I said, where did they preach? And, and the Lord walking with them, confirming the word with signs following. Let somebody shout, Amen. It will happen. He gave the commission and he backed up the commission with dynamic promises. Point number two now, the consecration for double portion. The consecration for a double portion. We're coming to 1 Kings chapter 19 again. 1 Kings chapter 19. The consecration of this Elisha for the double portion was not just on the final day, on the final day when Elijah was leaving. But look at when he received the call. Look at when he received the call. I'm looking at it now from 1 Kings chapter 19. And I'm reading from verse 19. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 19. So he departed thence and found Elisha. The Lord will find you. He has found you already tonight. And it says, the son of a shepherd who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. And he was the 12th. And Elijah passed by, by him and cast 
Tell me. And cast this mantle upon him. Hold on. This mantle that came upon him the very first day he met Elijah. Don't you remember? When Elijah was taken up, that was the same mantle that fell down. An indication that even though your consecration was how many years ago? Now 10 years ago, 20 years ago, God has not forgotten your consecration. Every consecration you have made, everything you have given up, even though it was done in the past, now at this time and this day of the double portion, God is going to collect and God is going to put everything together, all the consecration until now. And then your miracle has come. And then you will be a hand that will touch other hands, other lives. And then it says, Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. And he left the oxen. He felt the power. Elijah did not say anything. He felt the call. Elijah did not say anything. He says the prophecy. Elijah did not say anything. By throwing that mantle on him, he knew life was going to be different from that day. And you know, as the mantle is coming upon your life today, life is going to be different in your life, even from tonight in Jesus' name. Your nights will become different. Your days will become different. Your courage will become different. Your aspiration, ambition will become different. And the thing that is rising up inside you and making you to see the horizon and see the great beyond, that thing is going to be different from tonight in Jesus' name. And he left the oxen and he ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father, my mother, and then I will follow thee. Elijah had not even said anything. Elijah had not said, follow me. But what has not been said, you will understand. What has not been spoken, you will hear. What has not been written, you will read. And what is in the mind of God, in the mind of the Spirit, that nobody has even ever spoken to you. You are going to understand it, and you are going to rise up, and you are going to take the baton, you are going to run. I said you are going to run and the power of the Lord will never fail in your life. And you said unto him, go back again for what have I done to thee? And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen and gave unto the people and he did eat and he arose. He did stay back and he arose. He didn't delay and he arose. He wasn't arguing and he arose. He had no question to ask and he arose. He didn't think of what will happen in the future and he arose. Your own time has come to arise. The time of reasoning, the time of doubting, the time of questioning, the time of wondering, the time of dilly dallying, all that time is over from tonight. And he arose and he went after Elijah and ministered unto him. That's where his consecration began. Your own consecration began maybe some months ago, some years ago. And it is still continuous. And it's going to come to a head and come to a climax tonight. And the Lord will know that your cup, not of indignation, that your cup of consecration tonight is full. And you are ready to go. I am ready to go. Ready to go to, for extra service and greater service. And the Lord will do it in your life in Jesus' name. Look at it now. Second Kings chapter 2. I'm reading from verses 1 and 2. Second Kings chapter 2 verses 1 and 2. And it came to pass when the Lord will take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind. That Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, stay here, wait here, and uh, you know, you can rest over here. I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, Consecration. And Elisha said unto him, 
commitment. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as I so liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. You see, there are people when Elijah, Elijah was much older than Elisha, and he was the master. And Elijah was not tired. He was going from Gilgal, he was going to Bethel, he was going to Jericho. He'll go to Jordan, and he said, young man, stay there. You can rest. You can take some time off and be on vacation. And then the man said, no, you are not tired. I'm not tired either. Somebody there, are you tired? Any tired person there? The Lord will wipe away all the tiredness in Jesus' name. Hey, look at that. Elisha was a man. And you can see the consecration of a man. Let me show the consecration of a woman. We're looking at Ruth chapter 1. Ruth chapter 1, the same kind of consecration that Elisha had. That same kind of consecration Ruth had. So you cannot say, I'm a sister. Yes, consecration. I'm just a lady. Yes, consecration. I'm of this, I'm of that. Yes, consecration. And the Lord will honor your consecration. And the Lord will bless your consecration. And you are going to do something you never imagined you will do in your life. You will do for the Lord in Jesus' name. Ruth chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 16. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And whither thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God, my God. Anything different from Elisha's consecration? Your own consecration too will not be different. Verse 17, and where thou diest, will I die. And there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. The Lord is calling us to higher consecration, and to a wider consecration, and to a deeper consecration. It's calling us, and he wants us to make the statement with our mouth. He wants us to tell the Lord, like Elisha told Elijah, like Ruth told Naomi and said, no, I will not go back. No, I will not stay here. No, I will not leave you. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. And he says, God do so to me and more also. If any sin apart from death separates you and I. Let's come back to Second Kings chapter 2. 2 Kings chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 3. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? Storytellers, storytellers, they were there. And these people, they could have made the same consecration like Elisha, but they did not. Well, they will not disturb me. They will not hinder me. They will not stop me. I said they will not stop me. You will be unstoppable. Brother, I said you will be unstoppable. Sister, I said you will be unstoppable. A new journey is starting. A new progress is coming. And a new prophecy is to be fulfilled in your life. Anything that stopped you in the past, I am now unstoppable. I said, I am now unstoppable. Not only that, not only that, you will be unbeatable. Whatever comes against the sheep of your life and against the sheep of your ministry, you are unconquerable in Jesus' name. You know, all these uh, people, they came, do you know that the Lord is going to take your master away from your hatred? He said, yes, I know. Hold your peace. Look at verse 4. And Elijah said unto him, e Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he said, as the Lord liveth, and as, as, as so liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. You see that? 
the, 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 the statement came again and the sentence came again. Now you've done enough. You've consecrated enough. You've given enough. Stay here. Tarry here. Rest here. Relax here. And Elisha said, I'm not that kind of man. I said, I am not that kind of man. I am moving on. I am moving on. I am going to serve the Lord. Every form of tiredness, the Lord take away from your life in Jesus' name. I, I want you to understand that it wasn't just Elisha alone. I'm coming now to Second Samuel. Second Samuel chapter 15. You know, the consecration was not to stop with him. Other people too, they were told, tarry here, stay here, rest here, relax there, go back from here. And he said, no, no, no way. I'm moving on. Somebody there is moving on tonight. I said, somebody there is moving on tonight. You have an unconquerable spirit. And then you have a heart that is saying, I am moving on. I am moving on. I am moving on. That spirit of tiredness, the Lord will take away from everyone in Jesus' name. Second Samuel, Second Samuel chapter 15. And I'm reading from verse 19. Second Samuel chapter 15, verse 19. Then said the king to Etai, the Kittite, Wherefore goest thou also with us? Return to thy place and abide with the king and abide with the king for thou art a stranger and also an exile whereas thou camest but yesterday should I this day make thee go up and come down and, and down with us seeing I go with them I may return thou and take and take back thy brethren mercy and truth be with thee and Etai answered the king and said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul, and as the Lord the king liveth, surely in what place my Lord the king shall be, whether, whether in death or life, even there also will thy servant be. You see, the same heart with Elisha, the same commitment with Elisha, and the same consecration with Elisha. That's the same heart you have tonight. I said that the same heart you have tonight. And David said unto Etai, go and pass over. And Etai, the Gittite, passed over. And all his men, and all the little ones that were with him, they all passed over. Anybody passing over? Anybody determined to move on and nothing will drive you back in Jesus' name. We're coming back now. We're coming back to Second Kings chapter 2. Second Kings chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 5. And the sons of the prophets that were Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? These were people that had revelation, but they didn't have inspiration. They didn't have determination. And they didn't understand that if Elijah, if Elijah is to go today, what are you going to get from him? What are you going to receive from him? They just came to say, do you know the Lord is going to take your master away from your head today? And he said, he answered, yea, I know it. Hold your peace. And Elijah said unto him, tarry. Look at that again. Tarry, I pray thee here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he said, as the Lord liveth, and as I so liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on. We're moving on. I said, we're moving on. If I told you, you can stay back. Because look at the whole drop in the town. You can stay back. Are you going to stay back? You can rest a little. Are you going to rest a little? This is a special day. And this is the day of a double anointing. And of a double power. And of a double portion. You will move on until you get your own in Jesus name. Look at John. John chapter 6. John chapter 6. 
And I'm reading here from verse 67. John chapter 6, verse 67. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will you also go away? The Lord is asking you, Will you also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. And so we're moving on. I said we're moving on. We must see the end of this story. We must see the end of this event. And that double portion, we must see when it comes now. I will not be missing. You will not go to the toilet. You will not run somewhere. Tonight, as the double portion is coming, it will meet you there. I said it will meet you there. We'll come back now to 2 Kings chapter 2. 2 Kings chapter 2. And I'm reading here from verse 7. 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 7. And the 50 men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view a pharaoh. And they choose stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle. That's the mantle. That's the mantle. That's the mantle. And Elisha saw that mantle. That's the mantle that came upon him on the first day. And he saw that mantle again, and he knew, and he knew that God was going to take his master away today. And that mantle will not be needed in heaven. I need that mantle. I said, I need that mantle. Somebody there said, I need that mantle. Nobody will take it away far away. It is coming on me today. I said, it is coming on you today. Elijah took his mantle and he wrapped it together and he smote the waters and they were divided hither and thither so they took went over on dry ground. They went over. They went over. I said they went over. You will come over. You will go over. You will pass over. Anything that cannot disturb me will not disturb you. Anything that will not stop me will not stop you. Anything that will not slow me down will not slow you down. You and I are passing over. I said you and I are passing over. If I'm strong, you are strong. If I'm well, you are well. If I'm happy, you are happy. If I'm successful, you are successful. You must have the same power. You must have the same spirit. And you must have the same victory. I transfer that victory to you. Receive it in Jesus' name. Strength in your life. Power in your life. Healing in your life deliverance in your life revelation in your life in jesus name point number three now the connection the connection the connection with divine power the connection with divine power connection has come i said connection has come look at it in second kings chapter two second kings chapter two i'm reading from verse nine and it came to pass when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee, before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Let your prayer be bold. Let your prayer be courageous. Let your prayer be full. Let your prayer be comprehensive. Let your prayer demand something you have never got, something you have never seen, and something you've never seen any other person having. Open your mouth wide, you will feel it tonight. 
He said, let a double portion of thy spirit come upon me. He said, ask, ask. Look at Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah chapter 29. And I'm reading to you from verse 13. Jeremiah chapter 29. And we're reading from verse 13. This is yours tonight. Jeremiah 29. Reading here from verse 13. It says, And you shall seek me and find me. You'll find him tonight. You'll find the power tonight. You'll find the double portion tonight. He shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. That was the thing that Elisha did with all his heart and with all the concentration and with all the consecration. He sought what he wanted and he got it and tonight you are getting it. In Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 33. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. How many things are going to be added? And all these things shall be added unto you. Added unto you tonight. Double portion tonight. Double promise tonight. Double power tonight. Double provision tonight. Double prophecy tonight. And double inheritance for you tonight in Jesus' name. Power. Number one, the power of sonship. We're coming to John chapter 1, and I'm reading from verse 12. John chapter 1, verse 12. It says, And as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. The power of sonship is yours for the asking. If there's any doubt in your heart, and if there's any shaking in your mind tonight, the Lord has given this to everyone. As many as received him, to them he gave the power. He gave the power of sonship, the power for salvation. Romans, Romans chapter 1, and I'm reading from verse 4. Romans chapter 1, reading from verse 4. Holiness. Yes. There's the power for salvation. There's the power for sanctification. Available tonight. I said available tonight. Let your amen be like Elisha's amen. <laughs> Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 8. And you shall receive power. Salvation is settled. Sanctification is settled. Now, Holy Ghost baptism. Holy Ghost baptism. If you have been, you know, saved such a long time, and you have been sanctified, made holy such a long time, but Holy Ghost baptism, Holy Ghost immersion, Holy Ghost power, Holy Ghost endearment has not been there. Thank God you are here tonight. Tonight is the night. Because it says that you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Did anybody say amen for me to hear? <laughs> Colossians, Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 13. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness they will not bother you anymore in the day they will not bother you in your market they will not bother you in your family they will not bother you anymore in the dream they will not bother you anymore there's power tonight and that power will be permanent upon your life and anywhere you are when they see you they will run away because it says, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. He has translated us. I'm translated. I am translated into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have received, we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. 
available tonight. I said available tonight. Second Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1. Verse 3. According as his divine power. This is dynamic power. This is unfailing power. This is healing power. This is transformation power. And this is the kind of power that the devil cannot resist. This is irresistible power. According as his divine power has given unto us. How many things? How many things can you have tonight? How many things can you possess tonight? How many miracles can you take home tonight? According as his divine power, he has given us all things that pertain unto life and to godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Satanic nature gone. Adamic nature gone. Human nature gone. The nature of our forefathers gone. Grandfather, grandma, this is how they used to do. All that nature gone. Your personal uh, Adamic uh, uh, propensity and nature gone in Jesus' name. Partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. It's happening today. I said it's happening today. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 19. I'm taking some, something home today. I said I'm taking something home today. I will never be the same again. Something is coming within me. Something is coming in my soul. Something is coming in my spirit. Tonight I feel it. And tonight you will see it in your life in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power. Weakness, get out. All infirmity, get out. Fear, get out. All the doubting here and there, get out in Jesus' name. All the vacillation, undulating, I'm here, I'm not there, I will, I will not, I'm doubting, I'm fearing, everything is gone tonight. Behold, I give unto your power to tread on serpents and scorpions, all of them, all of them, they'll come under your feet. And over all the power of the enemy, and nothing, somebody there and nothing shall by any means hurt you nothing 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 shall by any means hurt me nothing shall by any means hurt me now let's look at let's look at a man is waiting for us elisha is waiting for us he said are you not going to see that i got it i got it so that you too you will get it elisha got it i said elisha got it i said elisha got it i have got it look at second kings chapter 2 verse 11 and it came to pass as it still went on and touch that behold there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder and Elijah went up by a wild wind into heaven and Elisha saw it will you see your own and he cried my father my father the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof and he saw him no more and he took hold of his own clothes and wrenched them in two pieces and he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him is for you and he went back and stood by the bank of Jordan and he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and he smote the waters and said what is the Lord God of Elijah and when he also at meeting the waters what happened 
they parted hither and thither. And Elisha went over. That river will divide for you. Yeah. Will be parted on your behalf. You will go over. And when the sons of the prophets, which were to view at Jericho, saw.